So now your meeting was like that, mm -hmm. and then what, what, what happened? Then they knew the acting director, Pat Marrier, and then uh, and then the coaches. Um, let's see who else, and the men's coordinator. Do you have ties to U of e? My sister graduated from oh. here, and I went to school. They, they, they invited me. They were very anxious to meet with me. And, and, uh, the area of women's spending, that was the one that I felt was inconsistent with what I have discovered and why I want uh, a, a major change in the accounting procedures for it before I will go back to my colleagues and defend another appropriation. Overall, I, so now your meeting was like that, and then what, what, what Then they knew the acting director, Pat Harrier, and then uh, who cares? Peace was the word at the deck. The first ever Northland Festival of Peace is to celebrate community effort to reduce violence. One of the sponsors says nonviolence has a lot to do with your community. Come out of here, one with the definition. Again, it's that sort of broadened definition of what nonviolence means. I mean, it is about being taken care of when you're in a crisis situation, and it is about reconnecting to the community. Kids of all ages were able to paint wooden birds, participate in nonviolent games, and even get a massage. Well, I, I learned that peace is a good thing and that can be, that's helpful and. Being peaceful, nice, and sharing and caring about other people. Festival of Peace promoted understanding, respect, and hope for one another. This event also remembered the children who have been taken by violence. Boyum, Channel 6 News. This home video shows what goes on on one Duluth street at night. Neighbors have been documenting the activity that often ends in police responding. One nearby resident has been videotaping this late night activity. Another neighbor has been taking pictures of what they say are gang members committing crimes in their neighborhood. So Sergeant Waller with the Duluth Police Department says these residents may be right. Gangs do exist here in Duluth. Oh, we have several different groups here uh, with, within the city and surrounding area. And uh, we have people that uh, drift into the gangs and drift out. Sergeant Waller says one of the biggest indicators that gang activity is going on is gang graffiti like this. He says if you see gang graffiti in your neighborhood, you can be fairly certain it's going on. Residents in one Duluth community say they're sure it's going on in their neighborhood. It really scares me. Our children can't even go down the store without being harassed. It's, it's terrible. Francine's children have not only been harassed, but her eight and three year olds have had guns pointed at them. He pointed a gun at my arm. He said, what's up, punk, to me? Francine has also been told that her entire family would be killed. Just last week, someone threw rocks through her windows. Her kids have been put in safe houses and stayed home from school because she fears they will be hurt. The police can't stop it. This has been going on just since July. We're not in Beirut. Beirut. We're not anywhere. Why do we have to put up with it here? Why is it that they cannot take and end this? Why can't they make our streets safe for us? Instead, Jerry and his neighbors are trying to take back their community. They continue their neighborhood watch program and say it's doing some good, but more needs to be done. There needs to be more patrol officers, definitely. There needs to be more lighting. There needs to be more um, crime watch. There's a lot of things that uh, you can do in the community, but the primary thing is, is everything starts at home. Uh, the more time you can spend with your children, the better. Duluth police say they are currently investigating residents' claims of gang and criminal activity in their neighborhood and could not comment on these specific incidences. But they did say neighborhood officers walked the streets to help mediate the problems. In Duluth, Kim Steininger, Channel 6 News.
Hi guys, thanks for joining us. Hi Barb. Hi. Lee, what is it about Carolyn? I know I've watched it, I love it. What is it about the show that you think makes it so popular? Well, I don't know. I mean, we, we certainly have a great time together. I think that it's a really nice group of people and I think the writing is really good. And um, I don't know, there's a chemistry that people either like or not, you know, so hopefully it's that that it's good chemistry. Yeah, and, and part of that chemistry, of course, comes from Annie, played by Amy. What do you think of your quirky character? Wow, um, I love playing this character. I get to say things that I've always wanted to say on television that every woman in America has always said in her real life. And um, I can be bold and brash, and it's a lot of fun. It's I, I'm I'm kind of um, different in real life, so it's it's very fun. It's yeah. very fun to play her. Leah, d um, do you guys all get along? Uh, Amy says you get, you've gotten to know her pretty well. Does everybody get along in the cast? Yeah, really well. It's um, it's really nice. There's a really good camaraderie. We're, it's not like we hang out all the time. We all have our lives, but when we come to work. We're really learning how to be like a great basketball team, yeah. I think. We like go down the court, you pass to Annie, she lays it up. <laughs> and then, you know, it's, it's really a wonderful feeling because we're not only getting to know each other as people, but comedically and we, we all understand how we work now. It's wonderful to be in the second year for that reason. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do either of you have any say in, in the, with the writers? I mean, can you say, I really hate this or this is great, can we do more with it? Have you got any a, a say in, in what goes on the air, final product? Well, I think that they're interested in making us happy and it is a collaborative thing and you know sometimes we don't like something but we try to make it work and then if it doesn't work they rewrite it you know we try to all be considerate with each other yeah but at the same time if if there's something glaringly wrong um, we'll work on it you know we can be very honest about things like that and and great improvements and great strides have been made especially with our new writing staff this yeah. year yeah it seems like um, everything's working well together oh yeah. it's flowing yeah. um, so much easier Leah I wanted to ask you quick before we go you were telling me about your brother tell us a little bit about uh, he went to UMD tell us about yeah, that yeah yeah my brother went went to school in Duluth and I was a dancer with the Minnesota Dance Theater and I remember going up there and, and uh, touring there uh, I love Duluth that's beautiful and the Boundary Waters we want I'm you to come Minnesota. back I want to come back come visit All us right. I'd love that <laughs> thank you both for joining us good luck with Caroline it's, gonna, it's a great show thank, thank you so you. much Uh, we're out raising money. It's a beautiful day. Uh, we encourage everybody to come out next year to try raise some money. We're all out for that, that uh, almighty dollar. It's a good exercise for the dogs and for us as well. market crash or something. The Great Depression. It's, nothing's happened like this since, since, gosh, the 70s. Well, any time that I can, of course, I speak out on this issue, 
uh, so that I can encourage everyone to get out and get those mammograms, especially uh, women 50 and older. I. You're always right, even uh, when you're stupid. And you'll learn things like if your lips are moving, you're communicating. And, and that you don't need to uh, actually give verbal instructions to your employees because you can give them, you know, just ESP. And if they don't pick it up, well, it's their fault. been kind of uh, spearheading this project for us. The train pulled out full, and it, it was uh, full of uniformed men, and uh, it was just uh, the thought in everybody's mind that how many of them were going to come back. Vivian never thought it would be her husband, Martin Victor Mackey, who would not return from World War II. Mackey was among the first from the Iron River area to lose his life, to which American Legion Post 506 is named after. His daughter, Maureen, sure imagines what it would be like to meet her father for the first time. I don't think you have to say any words. There's not much you could say, you know, it's 50 years later, but there's not much you could say. Just a hug. Maureen got the chance to visit her father's gravesite in Normandy, France. And she rubbed the sand across the cross, and it was like magic because all of a sudden his name and the date appeared. Vivian remembers the day she heard about her husband being killed, but says the realization didn't sink in right away. I think the realization came the day the war was over. And everybody, the whistles were blowing in town, and everybody was, you know, really happy. And, hey, I didn't have anything to be happy about. But that was more than 50 years ago. Vivian says even though those times are tough, she doesn't have any regrets especially when she looks at her children. Martin Victor Jr. is proud to show the Purple Heart his father was awarded. Today's tribute marks the 50th anniversary of the Hanson Mackey Post. Today is also special for Martin Victor Jr. because he is becoming a member of this post, which was named in honor of his father. In Iron River, I'm Molly Boyum, Channel 6 News. And I'm here asking for your help to change this country. To buy health insurance and they can't afford it. The dark clouds of bush and quail are going to recede over the... one-third Paul during the 18 years they were there and I'm glad they won't it's far enough 
or not far enough. A former Republican Senator Rudy Boschwitz, Dean Barkley, Reform Party candidate. Where I disagree with my opponent Rudy Boschwitz is that I would not favor a constitutional amendment to overturn Roe v. Wade. I thought that the partial birth abortion uh, just terrible and I would have opposed partial birth abortion and I would have voted to override the <coughs> president's veto on it. Uh, it shows the, the extremes to which uh, Senator Wellstone will go. Right. Okay. Well, let's see. Let's take. We're going to start out with the Dole cookies. The battleground is Cynthia's Custom Cakes Bakery in downtown Fargo. Very Republican cookie. <laughs> Light, subtle, conservative. I'd have to go with the Clinton cookie myself too. But this competition is sweet and is taking the bitter taste out of many voters' mouths. The recipe was printed in the Ladies' Home, no, Family Circle magazine, and I finally found a copy of it. And I thought it'd be really fun to have the cookies here. Mrs. Dole and Mrs. Clinton started the political bake-off just for fun. And people around town are enjoying the political taste test. People come in and, and they said, oh, I heard you have those cookies, and I want to have the Dole cookie, I want to have the Clinton cookie. Yeah, we're just voting for the cookie today. Okay. So you can try them both. You want coffee with that, Mary? The vote so far okay. is split. I'm going to go with the Clinton cookie. I'm not going to make up like I know anything about cookies, just better. <laughs> I'm going for the pecans, really, it's got a soft texture to it, it's really good. I'm a chocolate freak, so I'm going to go with the Clinton cookie. Some are voting along party lines, others are letting their taste buds decide. Mm. <laughs> good. Free samples are available, but to register a vote, you have to buy one. We're going to keep track of every cookie that's sold. We're going to keep a tote board, and then election night we'll announce the return. The best part is you can vote as often as you like. Just good, clean campaigning here. Yep, tasteful. Sarah Close Strike for NBC News. A juice cup and a toddler seem to go hand in hand, but the Institute of Pediatric Nutrition says this may not be such a winning combination. Yes, too much juice can lead to the development of diarrhea. It can replace important nutrients in a child's diet. And as we said, particularly if the child receives the juice from a bottle rather than a cup and bathes their teeth in the juice, they can develop tooth decay. Oh, she's so big. So how much juice is too much? Doctors say babies six months and under shouldn't have any juice at all. A child six months to a year should get just half a cup a day. And for toddlers a year and older, a cup a day should do. But then, what's the best juice to buy? I normally buy apple juice because it's healthy. The fact is, it's not. The, probably the worst are apple, grape, and pear juices. They're mostly sugar. Instead, nutritionists say look for juices that are 100% juice and chalked full of nutrients, not sugar. Much better choices would be orange juice, which has lots of potassium, vitamin C, folic acid. Grapefruit juice is a, is a good choice. Um, prune juice, which I know is not a child's favorite, but it, it has good nutrition. So parents need to read the labels. If the first ingredient is sugar water, or even if it's apple, grape, or pear, then they really need to put that back. Look, let's just forget. Well, I'm not, Mitch. I was raped. How long it takes? I do not care. I am going to get my kids back. No matter what you think he is to you, he's my son. I'm his mother. You can't take him away. What are you going to do? How are you going to feed him? You just let me worry about that, OK?
do you want to say to people that uh, should uh, maybe think about coming out here and doing? Come, it's super fun. It is. You'll get scared. How do you get a job like this? Well, carbon monoxide poisoning is very dangerous because it sneaks up on people. Uh, it's colorless, odorless. Uh, it's a heavier than air gas, so it uh, builds up from the floor up. Carbon monoxide occurs when heating fields like wood, oil, and natural gas don't fully burn. Heating systems need to be periodically inspected and maintained. Firefighters say to be on the safe side, you should have a carbon monoxide well, detector in before, your home. Because, uh, it's not like smoke, smoke alarms and smoke detectors are great, uh, but you can see the smoke, you know, you have, but with carbon monoxide you have, many times you have no advanced warning and to have this go off, uh, it really can save your life. Last year many people lost their lives because of this deadly gas. This caused a rash of Northlanders to buy a detector, leaving store shelves empty. But this year store managers say they are ready. Um, so we expect it as it gets colder and hopefully there isn't any um, unfortunate uh, events that happen where um, bad luck happens to people, but um, that probably will spur some sales on if something like that happens. But we hope. Carbon monoxide is more dangerous than you may think. You can't smell it, taste it, or see it, and its symptoms are often disguised because they resemble the flu. It's a failure to recognize the symptoms that kills. Uh, and that can work up from there. You can have nausea, and then uh, if it keeps going, you'll have loss of consciousness. And it, a lot of times you won't even know that you've got it. It'll just sneak up on you until it's too late and you're gone. Some of the first symptoms are headaches, fatigue, and dizziness. Fire officials say if you have these symptoms, you shouldn't ignore them. In Duluth, Molly Boyum, Channel 6 News. figure skaters are competing in the Great Lakes Skating Championships here at the deck. Each skater has one, sometimes two coaches, and usually two chaperones with them. All of these people are here in the Twin Ports for the entire week, and they're here spending money. We're going to see about 1,500 people from all over the Midwest, eight different states, and they're going to be here in town spending money on hotels, restaurants, uh, everything you can imagine. Most of these people are driving or flying in from out of town. Only a few competitors are from the Duluth Figure Skating Club. These are girls, most, well, girls and boys, but between the ages of, I'd say, uh, 10 and 18, so good shopping age. <laughs> They're visiting the major tourist attractions, going to the malls, and giving a boost to the economy. We worked real hard to get these folks back to Duluth, and I know we worked real close with the Duluth Figure Skating Club, and we're just happy to have them here, and hopefully they'll realize what a beautiful place Duluth is and come back again real soon. Hopefully we won't have to wait 15 more years. I would, can I just say all of them? Um, and people with disabilities make up about 20% of the population, and if they get out and vote, they're going to be recognized and addressed. We need to be heard. on all of our stuff at home. We made different kind of characters and then br brought them here. And then we got some things from the janitor and we just set everything up. <laughs>
it's been good again because the people that are coming to this unit are people who want to do some meaningful work in the guard. They are some of the best trainers that I've that I've seen before are some of the people I'm getting to work with here. See these rings are three o'clock high in diving. Right, 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 up. Right, up, 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 stop. See him? So just right. just to your left. Just right there. He identified him. Hostile engaged. Why did you decide to come out today? Well, I'm getting tired of the politicians being what would you call them, uh, next to God. I think if the people don't have a voice, it's their own fault. In West Duluth, it was easy to find people excited about this election, with two heated races bringing in voters. 40-year veteran Willard Munger is up for re-election against Brad Bennett, and County Commissioner Bill Crone is being challenged by former Duluth Mayor John Fido. It's our right to vote, and I think you're neglecting uh, you know, your life in general if you don't do what you should be doing. Well, I've always been concerned about uh, education. Um, I've been concerned about, you know, the quality of the streets and the quality of the things going on here in West Duluth to make sure that they start, you know, making this part of the town look good, et cetera. And they At UMD, registration booths were packed as many students participated in their first election as a voter. I didn't expect there to be as many choices or as many things to vote for as there was. Well, it was mostly the education. Actually, I'm a freshman, so the next four years are pretty important for the education. So. Voters spoke yesterday when they went to the polls, electing the man they felt was victimized by one of the nastiest ad campaigns in recent history. Well, the negative ads were a major part of it, I guess. I really didn't like those too much. And a lot of the, the education, and I've heard them both talk before, so that really helped out a lot, too. UMD student Jim Dahlin was typical of Election Day voters across the state. And it's mainly because of the nasty ads. Thank you. Watch my money, though. Exit polls You'll conducted get throughout back. the day showed Thank a staggering 90% of Minnesota Thank voters you. felt unfair attacks were made in the race for U.S. Senate. And the vast majority of those blamed Rudy Boschwitz. Paul Welso knows those ads helped him. People voted for me uh, because they kind of said to themselves, well, we don't agree with him on everything, but he's honest and he works hard and we know he cares about us and we know he's, we know he's a very good senator. That comes first. On the uh, ads, I think people in Minnesota rejected them, and uh, I think that's a good story for the whole country. Voters also made a strong statement about ethics after the campaign, giving overwhelming approval to a constitutional amendment which would allow voters to hold a new election to recall state officers involved in wrongdoing. However, Duluth Senator Sam Solon was voted back in for another term despite his involvement in PhoneGate this past spring. He says it's because he admitted he was wrong and said he was sorry. I think the people uh, were able to say, we trust Sam, he done, he's done a good job for us. He made a mistake, we're going to overlook it, and we want to give him another chance. And that's why uh, this, of all my campaigns, is the most uh, uh, gratifying and rewarding for me because, of, as you said, of what I have gone through in the past. Minnesota voters made strong statements about ethics yesterday. We'll have to wait two more years to see if the politicians listen. In Duluth and Carol, Channel 6 News. When you say that to me, that gets me worried.
I'm gonna go draw the spirit tree down at Bog Lake, which is what's gonna appear on uh, the 98 park permit. It's a hike. About a half mile. But Scott says it's the only way he can work as an artist. <sighs> kind of got to develop a shorthand, and the woods will tell you what that shorthand is. I mean, it sounds it sounds kind of strange, but that's the only way I can do it. And here's the tree. I got to figure out how to get out there without getting wet now. A gnarly old tamarack. So why was this relatively unknown artist chosen by the DNR? I do believe that it was in part due to my uh, painting. Speaking of that, here's one he did for the trout stamp contest. And uh, I was a semi-finalist. So that's his artwork, but he thinks his tree. philosophy was also key. This tree is really unique. I mean, you can see that it's it's been battling for, you know, for its whole life. And I guess, I guess my, my artistic journey has been kind of a battle because I'm not willing to um, do the typical gun barrel view that you see of most wildlife art. Um, this is pretty fun, with the teachers waiting on us and everything. Um, I think it's kind of cool because you don't really see your teachers in the restaurant. In this uh, facility, they'll be able to come in and find job openings statewide, nationwide, through the employment services and through the STRIDE program and, and the state programs and federal programs, they can get all the services in one location. We're really excited about this week. Uh, it's a big week with the Spirit National Snowcross, fifth anniversary for the event. Uh, we've got about 900 race entries. We're expecting over 20,000 spectators, somewhere between 20 and 30,000.
I would say this is probably one of the better races, better coordinated races. Uh, there's a lot of racers here, a lot of good competition. In addition to the 2,000 plus people dining at the deck, Gold Cross Ambulance crews kept busy delivering meals to those who couldn't get down to the deck today. Nearly 500 turkey dinners with all the trimmings were delivered to homes throughout the Duluth Superior area. DTA buses also pitched in for the holiday. They provided free transportation to and from the buffet at the deck. <laughs> Volunteers helping to serve the big meal say this is a wonderful way to spend their holiday. Nice to see so many people and kids all excited because there's so many choices. Yeah, enjoyable. I would say it's been quite a success. There's been a lot of volunteers having a good time. The people coming down are eating and having a good time. I think people have a lot to be thankful for. get a sense of awareness out in the community that child abuse is a problem here in the Twin Ports and that everybody needs to do their part to help out and to try to protect the kids in our community. You're looking at between uh, wages and fringe benefits in excess of $50,000 and uh, uh, that's a big chunk of money that's not going to be in the community. Holiday shopping has shifted into high gear now that Thanksgiving has passed and Christmas is less than a month away. It's a time when shoppers leave packages inside their cars as they travel from store to store. This is also the time of the year thieves prowl the parking lots and streets, checking cars, looking for those unprotected packages and valuables. Crime Stoppers wants everyone in the Northland to help prevent car prowling crime this year. Lock your car, lock your packages in the trunk or cover them in the back seat. Take valuable items home between shopping sprees and never leave anything of value in your car overnight. In 1995, there were over 700 cars prowled in Duluth alone. Think smart. 
protect your property this holiday season, and call Crime Stoppers if you know any active thieves. We'll pay you a cash reward and keep your name anonymous. Our numbers are 1-800-974-TIPS or 723-ENOUGH at 723-3683. I was in Union Optical and I was uh, just seated in, one, in their seating area and I heard two people come running out of the credit union. And I turned around and glanced and I just saw they're from the back that they were running out of the credit union. They had two, two people, I don't know if they were male or female, they had long coats on and just, like I said, running and making a lot of noise. And that was So then I tried to do, uh, you know, get, get it off the burner. I knew I couldn't throw it out the window or out the door. And so finally, Mr. Purcell came and uh, he said, you're getting out of here. And he took me by the sleeve and out I went. In the movie, these Dalmatians are so cute and so playful. Kids are putting these bundles of fun at the top of their Christmas list. But Dalmatians are not for everyone. Well, Dalmatians, like quite a few other breeds, are more what we call a higher energy dog. They are active. They need a, a lot of extra exercise during the day. Uh, and some Dalmatians that we've seen personally have been a little bit more aggressive than other breeds. Not only are Dalmatians a hot choice for Christmas gifts this year, but pets are in general. Animal experts recommend shoppers stop and do some research before buying that perfect Christmas gift. Whoa, sit down and count to 101. And I could easily give you 101 reasons why not. Number one, you have to do a lot of homework. You have to find out which pet which breed of animal or mixed breed of animal is best suited for your lifestyle. And Bert goes on to explain those 101 reasons, such as pets chew, pets leak, pets need to be fed, and pets take a lot of time and money. But don't despair, Bert gives us some other great gift ideas. Here are just some stuffed toys. Uh, obviously, you know, there's all kinds of books, coloring books, there's pajamas, there's clothing uh, out there that your little one can have. There's cards, there's games. Uh, my grandchildren have had a lot of fun with this one. It's a stuffed toy that turns into a Christmas present uh, or from a Christmas present into a stuffed toy, but he doesn't leak and he doesn't <laughs> need to go for a walk. 
some other gift ideas, buy a gift certificate from the animal shelter or breeder, let the owner pick out their pet, or maybe try a hamster or an iguana. Angela Wang, Channel 6 News. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, how lovely are your branches because of the fair weather thus far. And Jim Horton, owner of Chub Lake Tree Farm, says tree shoppers agree. Uh, this Christmas so far, we've been blessed with great weather, and as a result, people have been out in an abundance. We always have way more trees available than we have customers because we dream about that big day or that big year, I guess. The most popular Christmas tree this year at Chub Lake Tree Farm is this one. It's a balsam fir. It's got a great scent as well as sturdy branches to hang the ornaments on, and it's just a great looking tree. And some shoppers believe Christmas trees and their branches are priceless. We're getting out as a family and having fun and doing this, and this is the first time for us to go out and actually cut a tree down, so the price is not really that big of a deal. Why haven't you shopped around? Because I want to get it from Jim and Bev. <laughs> I enjoy coming out here and just cutting my own tree. Other Christmas tree shoppers believe those lovely branches have a price limit. It's kind of high, but it's not too bad. It's, it's affordable. If it goes up next year, I won't buy any more because that's getting out of hand for a Christmas tree. But Christmas tree shoppers don't despair. Jim Horton believes the prices will remain fair so you can keep on singing your song. No, prices have been real stable on the Christmas trees for a long time. Uh, our prices basically haven't changed in the eight or nine years we've been selling and growing trees. I don't know really why the market has held them as stable as it has, but fortunately we're able to grow them and come out at that. And uh, I guess it's a supply demand. Angela Wang, Channel 6 News. Uh, we simply are going to collect the information, complete and accurate, and uh, report that to the taxpaying public and let them make up their own minds about what they think about some of the issues. to plans that are submitted and uh, uh, recommendations. Well, I, I think it's premature, but I, I do think in general my great lack of clarity. I mean, it's a complicated institution the last X number of months. And uh, we did. I also see the, uh, uh, this uh, campus in particular and some of the others as having tremendous uh, impact in terms of outreach into their communities, doing research, and things of interest to the community, economic development. I, I do believe in the idea that money will be managed carefully uh, when it's managed uh, at, at the, look, you have to clear it with me every time you spend the dollar ninety. I, I think it's premature, but I, I do think in general my philosophy is that the campuses, I'm just talking philosophically without knowing where people are lined up, should have control of their budgets. And, uh, but that should be pursuant to plans that are submitted. and. Uh, I'm ML3 Carey Preisler, stationed on board the USS Simon Lake in La Maddalena, Italy. I'd like to say hello and Merry Christmas to my family in Duluth, Minnesota. Skiers and snowboarders are all cheering the expansion of Giants Ridge Ski.
The Pilar Beef is well and, worth uh, the while. You know, this, this expansion is, is going to enable us to become truly what we feel a destination resort area. Uh, you know, like any business, uh, we try to uh, meet the needs of the customers and, and so on and provide something new. The IRRB agrees. They're happy with the returns of their investment. People are coming here. We had 10 busloads of people here from Twin Cities today. They're coming and spending their dollars up in northeastern Minnesota and, and providing economic enhancement for the region. And this is one of the many ski lifts that'll take you to the 10 new Glade-style ski trails. According to skiers, these Glade-style ski trails you're skiing in the woods or on the mountains. I like them better because they're different to do. It's not doing the same old stuff and they're just more fun to do because it's just more like you're skiing on the mountains instead of out here. I like kind of double black diamonds, and they got 2,002 in Alta, so those are double blacks, and I like more challenging things than just hill sinky and stuff. Double black diamonds? But for those of us that aren't expert skiers, giant ridge areas for beginner and intermediate levels. <laughs> Angela Wang, Channel 6 News. There's almost nothing faster than this in the snow. They're flying through the air, wiping out, and taking a hold in the world of sports. The NPR Snowcross World Series went national for the first time last year, and the momentum continues with more force this year. I mean, last year was the first year of that championship. And it was, you know, everybody was manufacturers, media, everybody I was kind of going, well, this is a big step, let's see how it goes. It was very successful. This year, a huge bandwagon has been created and people have been jumping on like crazy. And pro racers agree, there's a lot more interest in the sport. I think motorsports has become a lot more popular. They're starting to spread all over like Colorado, Vermont, all over there, not just Minnesota and Wisconsin anymore. It's huge. It's, Vermont was out in the middle of nowhere, up in a mountain, bad weather, and there was you couldn't find a place to stand to watch hardly. It was really big. What makes this different from other snowmobile races is the racetrack. This is the racetrack. It's a bumpy terrain, and that's where all the action takes place. You could say it's like motocross, but for snowmobiles. And spectators love this action-packed sport. Well, it's it's very exciting. There's never a dull moment. There's um, there's crashes. Hopefully, they're not that bad, but it's a lot of fun to watch. You better keep your eyes and ears open for this up-and-coming sport because you never know. This sport may soon be a winner. Angela Wang, Channel 6 News.
In his trademark white and purple number 11, Dan McMahon raced side by side with brother Tim for 15 years. Following in his father's and older brother's footsteps, he built his first stock car in 1981. He went on to win track championships in every class he raced in. Dan was a hard charger who was respected by his fellow drivers. His demeanor on and off the track made him one of the most popular racers ever to compete in the Northland. While he brought smiles to the faces of many race fans over the years, his death brings many tears. No more. It's quarter two right now. Sort of like the FBLA. And the winning ticket. The winning ticket is Debbie Work. Unless you've got an old dependable, uh -huh. it, uh, it doesn't matter, new or old, when it gets to be this cold, you've got to plug them in. Yeah, I didn't have it plugged in, though, That's because it was frozen shut, so I couldn't get the plug-in in there. The roommate of the defendant, by all accounts, was in fact present in the residence that they shared uh, during the event itself and in fact heard the commotion. Uh, the defendant claims that the roommate is only a witness, uh, and while the roommate in fact did participate in a very preliminary interview early in the investigation, he has uh, since refused cooperation.
I know all the neighbors and we've been here for a long time and they're all really nice people mm -hmm. and we just never saw that neighbor so and it was a shock <laughs> to say the least. They're ready. They're ready to be back. I, I could. I. I've been doing this for a, a lot of years, and I. I can tell. They're excited. They're happy to be back, and. Uh, the the enthusiasm is there. It's fun. food and fuel, armed robbery. Just occurred. Continue to be uh, served specialties that will serve the needs of the community and then what we need is the referrals and the um, alliances with the other institutions in order to have them uh, continue to want to do business with us and not to compete by building those same specialties uh, within their own organizations Eleven-year-old Trisha Swapinski was struck and killed by a pickup truck last month, just seconds after stepping off a DTA bus. Now Assured Trisha's uncle, Dale Swapinski, and other parents are, are asking officials to increase safety measures for school children. I'm not uh, well-versed enough with all the different safety dimensions. Um, what I do know is that an 11-year-old girl should not be let off on a four-lane highway unaccompanied coming home from school. That much I know. The state tried to stop Duluth from using city buses to transport school kids when an 11-year-old boy was killed getting off a DTA bus in Woodland. Back then, DTA officials said they would have to lay off workers if they had to cancel the school contract. So Duluth lawmakers pushed bills through the legislature to allow Duluth schools to continue to use the DTA. Now, lawmakers, school officials, and the DTA are meeting with concerned parents to find the safest way to transport kids. 
One of the first changes has been for the DTA to start new routes along Grand Avenue. As of this week, students no longer have to cross the street to get on or off the bus. Right, Dale here, says he believes that's a step in the right direction and he will continue to work flow. until he reaches his goal. I will be happy if middle school children are transported by our school district in a, in a more safe manner. And if it needs legislation to assure that continuing into the future, it's the least that I owe the memory of Tricia. In Duluth, Angela Wang, Channel 6 News. Duluth has a rich artistic life, but in order to ensure that the arts can continue to give to our community, we must give to them in return. Uh, that is why we are launching today the Depot United Campaign for 1997. These volunteers at Winterquist Elementary School are drilling and playing with wires for a good reason. They're stringing up cables so each classroom can go surfing on the internet. The internet can provide the most up-to-date resources that, in a, you know, we're sitting in the, the library right now and um, it, anything that's in print is already out of date. So, and it gives them um, visual access that they would never have, like um, you can go visit museums in different parts of the country and they actually see the exhibits as if you were there live. All the volunteers agree they're working for a worthy cause. I, I just have a real involvement with it and I think it's important and our kids have access to it and so by being here at least I show that I'm uh, concerned about getting the, the actual wire strung, not only just talking about it but uh, making sure that the wire gets strung as well. So, And it's fun, it, it's, a great, it's a great day. So. There are many educational sites, um, lots of our books in our library collection are pretty old or pretty dated and the information that they can find on the web is current information that's relevant for many of the research projects that they're doing. And there seems to be a common theme in what the students are looking forward to on the internet. It would be fun because you can talk to people like from other places. <laughs> talk to other people in a different country. You can learn stuff from around the world and talk to other people. But these students know they're going for a ride on the information superhighway, so they're buckled up and ready to learn. It might like teach me new things that I've never known before. In ESCO, Angela Wang, Channel 6 News. I am 
extremely honored to be a Green Bay Packer. I thank everybody on this team are honored. We accomplished something great yesterday. It's been a long time coming, not only for you, but for myself. The, the stability and the volume of these large industrial um, customer revenues. I've been thinking about this topic a lot lately, so. I suppose. She's close to it. Yeah. You know the buy from, so. A lot of shipping costs, I'm sure. Uh, the Menorca mine uh, employs 370 people, and uh, the long-term contract and its competitiveness in electric price to the mine help to ensure those jobs and ensure competitive taconite production for that mine this topic a lot lately so I suppose she's close to it yeah you know the, part of the, answer. the stability and the volume of these large industrial um, customer revenues help to keep our residential costs uh, down and keep our costs stable for other customer groups as well cool. boy it's so nice talking to people that are actually used to interviews she's hasn't been interviewed lately He's got two feeding troughs, and he pours about 50 pounds of feed every day for the deer. Lawrence St. Germain says he knows the deer are overfed and overpopulated, but he'll continue to give them their food. They don't go away. As my rabbit cages over here, that's why we started feeding them this year, is because they were starting to dig it out of my rabbit cages. There are just too many deer and not enough vegetation, and these beautiful brown creatures have also become a big problem in Jay Cook State Park. They're eating the plants and causing serious damage to the natural vegetation. As you can see right behind me inside the deer-proof fence, there's a variety of small trees and shrubs, but just outside right where we are, there are only a few small trees. If this problem persists, many species of trees could be lost. It also increases the chance of insect outbreaks and forest fires. The DNR is proposing a week-long special muzzle loader deer hunting season that would run after the regular season. Hunters would apply for a special permit. Biologists hope that the hunt will get rid of about 60 deer per year. It's estimated that there are about three to 400 deer in the park. Well, I can understand their concern. Uh, people, especially that live around the park, uh, get to feel like these deer, their own deer, their own pets, and, and there's no easy way to do that except that they're, they are causing, uh, these deer are causing serious damage to the vegetation in the park, and, and unfortunately, uh, a lethal means is about the only effective way to do it. And visitors agree. Francine Duffy says she loves deer, and population control will only strengthen the herd. I think it's a good idea to keep the deer population down because there's not enough habitat to support them if it gets too large. There's no predators here and there's no other way that the deer population can be controlled. Angela Wang, Channel 6 News. Catch this man, bring him to justice. You can't do this. You cannot do this. This is not right. Okay, nobody deserves this. Fire broke out at the house around 12.30 on Saturday. Michael had been gone less than an hour. When he came back, he discovered smoke uh, pouring from his home. Inside, and I walked along the alley here and saw the baby's room it was on fire and they were throwing stuff out of it. And I could look up and see all the way through up to the, you know, the roof. And, you know, I, I just kind of lost control. I, you know, was crying and emotional. And the fire started on a rocking chair in a corner of the nursery. Nothing was stolen. CDs, a stereo, a computer, all left, as well as an untouched jewelry box. But that was probably the only thing not destroyed. All around, smashed glass, broken lights, and even a collector's plate with a look-alike picture of his daughter, damaged. It's glass embedded right in the shelf. That's pretty violent. Pretty vile. It takes a pretty angry person to do something like that. Michael doesn't know who or understand why someone would deliberately destroy his home. 
He is well liked by his neighbors and gets along with pretty much everyone. His family is the only black family in the general area and neighbors claim this could be racially motivated. If it was race motivated, you know, you could have left a sign on my door, you know, burned across in my front yard, I would have left. But Michael adds that it's premature to determine the motivation. For now, he and his family are just trying to get through these very difficult days, supported by family, Here's friends, Here's and neighbors. You need. And, and for all these friends to come together and, and, and drop stuff off on their way to work for us, and you know, you know that you're loved and, and that you do have a lot of good friends, and ultimately you will get through it. You know, and, and that's, that's all we have to keep us sane at this point. You know, until the person who did this is caught and, and brought to justice, there will be no sanity. Yeah, we'll live with this fear every day. Good morning, Marnie and Emily. Thanks for joining us today. Thank Good you. Thank you. <laughs> Marnie, your family on Something So Right is, I guess we'd say, really not a typical TV family, but is it realistic? Um, I think it's very realistic, actually. Um, the 90s family today isn't like the families were, you know, in the 1950s with a mom, a dad, two kids, and a dog. You know, there are a lot of blended <laughs> families now. So I think it is very realistic, actually. And a lot of blended families have said that our show is very true to life. So Yeah, and most of my friends, I can never get a hold of them because, you know, they're either at their mom's, their dad's, their stepdad, their stepmom, and I can never get there at, like, four places and once. So a lot of my friends are in the same, same situation. You guys spend a lot of time on the show. Um, do you get along with the other kids on the show? Oh, yeah, we all get along. It's so much fun. Like at lunch, we'll go, we have like a double bike, and we go on the bike, and we go into the back lot, and we do lots of things. And we even spent Christmas Eve together, so we see each other a lot, and it's great that we get along. How about you, Marnie? You're a little bit older. Is it okay to spend so much time on the, sh on the set with the, uh, the other kids? And, and oh, yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. We've all bonded. We all bonded since the pilot. We were all together one week and it felt like we'd been together for like five years, you know? It's just, we all bonded. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Are you anything like Nicole, the girl you play on the show? Um, yeah, I think so. I think, I think Nicole and I are very similar and even more as the show progresses. Um, we sort of wear the same type of clothes and I'll go shopping and I'll, I'll sort of like think that this looks sort of like Nicole and this looks like me <laughs> and then I'll bring the clothes to the set and see if they want to, you know, use them for the show. So, yeah, Nicole and I are a lot alike. We're both only children, too, so. Yeah, the show is doing really well and thank you guys very much for joining us today. Good luck with its future. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. See you later. <laughs> And it shows people that not only strangers die in these accidents. It could be one of your best friends. It could be somebody that you just have a class with. Or it could be a, a stranger.
chapter of the Figure Skating Association met and said they were determined. Jim, thank you all very, very much. Let me let me just say this because. Carleton County will be footing most of the bill for these trials. It was a major expense that was obviously not expected, not budgeted for, and one that court officials cannot ignore. This is my 15th year as county attorney here, and during the, my tenure, we've never had a uh, change of venue where we had to uh, be uh, faced with this issue. Here are some of the big ticket items, witness fees, travel, hotel and meals, juror fees, and suspect incarceration. Staff will have to travel south and attend these trials, and replacements will have to be hired to do their jobs while they're gone. Some estimate the cost of these trials could approach $1 million. Some Carleton County taxpayers say it's worth it. I think justice needs to be served, and if, if that's the price we need to pay, I think we should, we should pay it. The Constitution allows everybody a fair trial. But some residents say their taxes are already too high. Well, I'm not very happy about it, obviously. I, I think if I'm paying, paying for the trial, I'd like to pay it for it in the uh, least expensive way possible, and I think they could get a fair trial here. So. And that's the other thing is to cool it down. Get cold water on it, uh, not necessarily ice or snow. If that's all you have, put it on, but be careful so that you don't go to the other extreme and cause a frostbite. Put 16 racing firefighters on snowshoes and what do you get? Well, I don't know either, but a snowshoe race is exactly what the fire department from Oakland, Wisconsin put on to raise funds. Those 16 galloping dousers of flame were joined by 44 other concerned citizens to provide much needed money for firefighting equipment and fire truck maintenance. The race is a long-standing tradition in the community. We've had it since 1988 and they've been going on for I don't know how before that, I don't know when they started. And we took it over after a few years of not having them, we took it over in 88. One of the events of the fundraiser was a relay race that included two teams of Oakland firefighters and the cream of the DNR. Oakland Team B was on the winning track almost until the end. I bid it on the last leg of the relay, so we lost, and now we got to eat crow for another year. Because of Dennis's faux pas, Team B came in a disappointing third. But when the snow settled at the end of the day, $2,000 had been raised for the Oakland Volunteer Fire Department. With photojournalist Jay Conley in Lyman Lake, Wisconsin, the snowshoe capital of the world, I'm Dave Anderson for Channel 6 News.
Well, around the world, millions of people walk every day for just basic necessities of life, water, food, firewood, that kind of thing. And this is one way that we can identify with them. One of the themes for Crop Walk is we walk because they, meaning the poor around the world, walk. Jessica Lenato has tried three different schools and has dropped out of all three. The classes were so big, like so many kids and only one teacher, you barely ever got any help and it, I just didn't like it. Ben Cannon, superintendent of Superior Schools, says the dropout rate is a problem that they are continually working on. He says his idealistic goal is for every student to finish high school. That's not a goal that probably can ever be reached for a lot of reasons. So what we do is try really uh, hard to make sure that the number of students who don't succeed is at least as few as possible. Northland Secondary is an alternative school that the Superior School District has to help students who are prone to dropping out. I love being here and I love dealing with kids, but the potential here is at any mo moment there could be a conflict. You know, and our staff have grown over the years to be very sensitive to that and very keen on that. And so when there's a potential conflict coming up between a couple students, they get on it right away. We deal with both issues. We take time to resolve the issues. Jessica agrees. She says she's finally found a school that she wants to graduate from. The teachers are nicer and the classes are smaller and you get, uh, it's like, it's everything's fair. It's not, they don't judge nobody here. It's just fair. In Superior, Angela Wang, Channel 6 News. These officers say they were just doing their jobs when they rescued slain Bayfield Deputy Dick Parquette. We did what we were. It had to be done. We were available. I like to think that any other law enforcement officer would have done the same thing. Deputy Parquette was responding to a routine call. He only reached the first step of the apartment building when 36-year-old Ron Fisher blasted Dick with several rounds of bullets from a semi-automatic rifle. When the men arrived at the scene and without thinking about the danger they were about to put themselves in, they went in to save their friend. We got the officer. We backed out and got him back around the corner of the building where the doctor and the EMT was waiting. But uh, it was too late for the officer. He was already gone. Um, but we tried. For their bravery and heroism, Governor Tommy Thompson will present the men with Medals of Valor. I'm honored. I think it's a real shame we have to be awarded and someone had to lose their life to do it. It's nice to be recognized for what you did, but I guess if you look at it realistically, uh, I guess the honors and that should go to our families. You know, they're the ones who uh, every day kiss us goodbye and know that uh, unlike a lot of professions, they're kind of sending us off to war, you know, and they know that reality says we might not come home again. But the officers say it's still worth risking their lives for the community, and they could not do it without the support of each other. It's not just to me. It's, it's to the department. It's to the other officers that was there because you work together. You count on each other, and you depend on each other, and you can't do it alone. Kim Steininger, Channel 6 News.
It's been a combination of the weather the last two years. It's the, the freezing and thawing and the freezing and thawing have made it just absolutely terrible. Yeah, I saw him. I just, I was still, I was still groggy. It was six, seven thirty in the morning. I just saw him. I was like, I couldn't believe it was happening. I was like, what's going on? So it wasn't the alarm clock that woke John Miller. It was the sound of strange thumpings that got him out of bed. Not yet fully awake, John felt like he was taking part in some sort of dream where good guys always come out on top. He was like getting right here with the TV. He was holding it like this and getting ready just to walk out the door. And I grabbed him and I pulled him back and then I just pretty much held him right here and right in this area till, for like two minutes till the cops came. Before John woke up, the suspect had six boxes of food right here out on the porch. He also had John's credit cards which he took from the bedroom where John was sleeping. When that's the scary part of it, he could have done, I mean, he could have done anything to me there. He could have shot me, stabbed me, I mean, and we were never known. That's, that's a really, that's a scary thing right there. John says it's amazing that the suspect walked through his entire house and almost completed the job before he woke up. He says next time he'll be wide awake and he won't fight the bad guys on his own. If he has a knife, I could have been in a lot of trouble. And I would never, I wouldn't recommend, I wouldn't do it again. Because you never know, people are, people these days are really, and unpredictable, you don't know what's going to happen. In Duluth, Angela Wang, well, Channel 6 thief, News. He was taking the TV and walked away. But he, he did it during the daylight hour.
Uh, but the general reaction I've been getting seems to be positive, and people think it's funny, and people think it's it's good and it's funny, um, which is a little different than what we heard last year. So some people said it was funny, but some people didn't say it was good. So. This levee was just built a week ago. This afternoon, the Army Corps of Engineers was back, determined to stay above the waters of the Redwood River. So far, the danger is under control, but periodic ice jams like this one outside Redwood Falls add considerable uncertainty to any predictions. The water rose five feet in just two hours next to this bridge, so fast that it prompted some questions about the information transmitted by this measuring station. National Weather called the sheriff's office and asked them to come out and check it. They didn't believe what the instruments were telling them. Apparently not. Further downstream, Redwood Falls residents came to watch in amazement as the swollen river rushed by and wondered what might happen if all the water trapped behind that ice dam suddenly broke through. Rushing water is already within a few feet of the city zoo, so many of the animals and birds have been evacuated, while others have been released into areas where there's higher ground. Well, I fully expect that uh, by the end of the uh, Easter weekend, we'll have water up here on the road and in this parking area. This part of the state is so waterlogged that even in areas well away from the rivers, roads are closed, fields are flooded, and homes that once sat next to those fields are now lakefront property. Grace Whitted says conditions are the worst she's seen in 50 years. I've never seen this much ice, never, and it's never been this high. Frightening. Very frightening. We're helpless watching this happen in front of us on our highway. And there's no fault of the school bus driver. There's vehicles stopped both sides, east and west bound. And this car just whistled through like nothing was going on. The scenario Donovan ranted, scary one, 